Hello everybody, I'm Challenger Jacku and welcome back to part 5 of our No Ring Challenge series. We've now conquered this challenge with all 4 of our heroes, so now it's time to find out where it's possible to beat Beat the Cat's story without collecting a single ring. If you haven't watched our previous videos, I highly recommend you do so and the links will be in the description below. However, before we begin, if you love Sonic content or challenge videos in general and you want to see more content like this on the channel, do me a favour and smash the subscribe button, like the video and hit that naughty bell. We're aiming for 100 subscribers by April and I release a new challenge video on a weekly basis and sometimes even more than that. And if you have any ideas for future challenge ones that you'd like to see me tackle on the channel, slip them down below and I'll definitely see what I can do. As always, I'll quickly go over the rules of this challenge, although they're pretty self-explanatory at this point. First of all, if we collect a ring at any point, it counts as a fail and we have to restart the stage. Next, the run will begin at Swingle Park and is completed upon the defeat of KR6. And finally, yes, the run will be glitchless as they won't really need it at all when routing. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight in. Our journey begins within the depths of the Mystic Ruins, with everybody's favourite OC being the cat. As he sleeps dreaming about his next solo venture, Fishing Adventure 3, his companion Froggy is drawn towards a falling star from the sky, captivated by the sight of the decapitated tale of chaos? I'm sorry, but how does that even work? Chaos is a literal water god. This ain't H2O, he isn't a mermaid. Possessed by this fragment of the mighty god of destruction, Froggy suspiciously grows a tail of his own and steals his friend's good luck charm, the Chaos Emerald. Bewildered by the night's events, Big follows his friends to the hustle and bustle of Station Square to reclaim his good luck charm and now strangely behaving friend. Yeah, this is certainly something. After searching the city for a while, I decided to grab Big's lure upgrade in the water bank behind Twinkle Park. Four of these are scattered throughout the hub worlds and whilst they claim to allow Big to catch bigger fish, this has a side effect of making Froggy infinitely easier to catch as well. Now if you've ever had trouble with Big's playstyle in the past, hunting these lures down are certainly worth your time. Eventually we do find Froggy only for the demented frog to flee under a car into the sewers. Unlike Knuckles however, Big doesn't play around lifting the car himself with his memeable strength. God damn, allowing us to reach Twinkle Park via the elevator, the first stage of this challenge. Now Twin- oh! Um, let me try that again. Twink? Huh? Sega, is this how we're really going to do this? Really? Well, yeah, there you have it. It turns out it's impossible to beat Big Story ringless. For some strange reason, Big enters the level unlike any other character, dropping from the air directly into the path of rings. I have no idea why this is the case, and it's bloody annoying given I was so sure this would be beatable ringless. Now, you can try to weave away from the rings mid-fall. However, due to Big's weight, he falls like a rock, making it impossible. So if he can't beat this ringless, what is the least amount of rings required to beat it? In Twinkle Park's case, only one. Now, Big's playstyle is a contentious point for many fans of this series and game in particular, with the vast majority citing his playstyle as boring and useless, so where does my opinion lie? Well, somewhat in the middle. Whilst I do agree Big Story shouldn't be a requirement to unlock the final story, I have to be honest and say I think the fishing is fun enough to beat its own sub-game like Sand Hill and Sky Chase. The aim of the game is rather straightforward. Big's levels are cut off sections of Sonic's own stages tasking you with finding Froggy in a nearby body of water and catching him to beat the stage. With the X button, a reticle will pop up allowing you to catch your line into water, while some merge double tap the stick left to right to move the bait. Once Froggy notices and takes the bait, you can enter catching mode by pressing down on the analog stick and there. At this stage, it's just a battle of will and patience, ensuring you gradually lower Froggy in with the A button without the line breaking, something that will happen if the gauge on the right side reaches the top, which will result in big losing a life. So in theory, this whole playstyle revolves around managing the meter, right? We should be somewhat correct in that assumption. However, a technique I figured out as a kid made tackling big stages almost child play. Just mash the A button. Nah, I'm not kidding. If you mash the A button instead of holding it, you can lure Froggy in without the meter filling up at a drastic rate. Using this, we have no issues catching Froggy and we are free to continue on. Thanks to this technique, it honestly became a shock to me that so many people struggle so much with Big's gameplay. Through a combination of this and the many lure upgrades, you really shouldn't have that much trouble in clearing your stages. The only annoying aspect of these missions is the potential that other fish will be attracted to the bait, forcing you to recast in most cases. With Froggy caught, he somehow manages to escape again, forcing us to pursue into the Mystic Ruins in the next stage of this failed challenge. Ice Cap Before we actually enter Ice Cap however, I decided to take a detour to the jungle so we can access two more of Big's upgrades. The first being another lore upgrade hidden within a secret passage along the right section of the jungle, and his power rod Big stashed away under his bed. Now this isn't too useful, all it does is extend the range of his cast, but we might as well grab it whilst we're here. Just look at him go, if he can move that nimble on ladders, what the hell is his excuse for that abysmal running speed? The final upgrade we need here is located within the ice path itself. Big's life belt that essentially works as a water ring allowing him to float in the water. I'm convinced they made this upgrade specifically for clearing the water here as it isn't actually required anywhere else in the game. 
Ice, oh, come on. Yep, it happens yet again. This time I was a little optimistic as Big seems to fall from a further height this time around. So I was thinking maybe he would have enough time to move out of the way, which to an extent he does. However, it's unfortunately not enough and he still collects the two rings upon landing, bringing our ring count to three. Would it have really killed him to allow Big to start the stage already grounded? Staying true to its namesake, you'll notice immediately that Ice Cap is rather lacking in the water department. There is a pool of ice with this suspicious discoloured patch, but nowhere on first glance to fish. This is because you need to use big strength to break the ice via the rock which is a really cool idea now that I actually think about it. From here Froggy is simply a catch away. The only annoying portion of this is that sometimes your cast will fail as the hole is a bit too small for Big's fishing pole. Please don't demonetize me for that YouTube. <laughs> Once you're into catching mode, Ice Cap is easily beatable albeit with another two rings added to our total. His friend held captive by the demonic two-tailed fox, our boy springs into action clumsily slaving Froggy by tripping over his two left feet. Froggy again fleeing to the comforts of Station Square we hop on the train to tackle the next stage in this run, Emerald Course. Now Big's Emerald Course takes place by the lighthouse and can be rather annoying if the circumstances don't go your way. The whole area is surrounded by the ocean and even a secret cove located under the water to the right of the lighthouse. This becomes a problem when Froggy can be anywhere in this pool of water, so in some circumstances just finding him can be a task in of itself. Unfortunately, like every stage before, Big entered the stage free falling landed on top of another ring, raising our overall total to 4. I still don't understand why this is even a thing when we see him enter the stage normally. Is it some kind of inside joke about how cats always seem to land on their feet? Anyway, upon killing the coconut by nicking our way, Froggy was generous enough to be swimming in the water towards the side of the stage, allowing us to quickly find him and catch him again. Well, after we caught this other fish that was attracted to the lore of the bear. Nevertheless, Emerald Coast is easily beatable with only a single ring. Like clockwork at this point, neither Big or I can catch a break, as E102 Gamma, his mission to find the frog with Chaos is missing tails comes out of nowhere, capturing Big's four-legged friend. Thus, we must pursue the beloved Tin Can to egg on a secret base on the other side of the Mystic Ruins. I'm sorry, I know I made this joke in the last video, but seriously Eggman, why don't you have any security? Are you really trying to tell me that nobody noticed the massive purple cat just waltzing in here and aboarding the egg carrier? You had enough time to set up an entire minigame for Amy, but not enough to stop a slow purple cat? Just have Metal Sonic man the door at this point, you haven't locked away yet, you will solve all your problems if you just had tighter security. Having successfully boarded the egg carrier before it takes off, Big follows the fishy scent using his keen sense of smell to the middle of three doors, leading us to the final stage of this challenge. Hot shelter. As we f wait, we actually start in the elevator this time around? Well, this changes everything. Yes, despite my utter hatred for this stage, it turns out that we actually start in the elevator, rather than falling into the path of rings, making this stage potentially beatable. Now, I like to call this stage the Sky Deck for the alternate characters, and that's essentially what this place is. Big's version of this stage takes place in Amy's first section, until the room with the flooding water where Froggy himself resides. Upon exiting the elevator, we avoid the rings so we can pass through the door leading to the next section, which is actually a normal door this time around, so no cog needed. The green shield is still there though, so we grab it to make our time here all the easier. To be perfectly honest, there wasn't much to say in this one, there's only one bandit present in this version of the stage, which was just a coconut, allowing us to simply run past it, through the magic of 3D space. Thanks to Big's life belt, we could harmlessly float over the water to the final section of the stage. However, even if we couldn't, Big being the literal incarnation of Usain Bolt climbing ladders, we'd clear this either way. Passing through the final door, we reach the final obstacle of this failed challenge run. As before, we need to scale the base of this structure to hit the switch so the water will flood the room. Doing this with Big will free Froggy from the water tank, allowing us to catch him, which is easier said than done. Alright, so the act of scaling the base isn't too difficult until we reach the ring circulating the structure. With Amy, we can just jump in between the rings and move Move on. However, thanks in part to Big's massive hitbox, even being slightly close to the rings will result in a fail. And since there are no checkpoints in this stage, we must start from the beginning. Now, this did take me a few tries, which was incredibly annoying. But what you're going to want to do is jump on top of the railing of the staircase and just slightly tap jump so Big will land on the edge without falling off or collecting the rings. Again, because of how huge he is, this is finicky as hell to do. But once you manage it, a simple jump is all it takes with a cutscene indicating what you should be doing takes place, allowing us to catch Froggy ringless once the water is drained from the tank. I will I will say the power rod upgrade came in clutch here, its extended range making it possible to cast our lure from above, allowing us to completely bypass the rings in the process. Out of all the stages in this challenge, I never would have expected Hot Shelter of all things to be the one that's actually beatable ringless. Life is just full of surprises. In the most bewildering scene today, Takao transports Big to the ancient past, when it's in the offence of the first time she discovered the Seven Emeralds and their controller, the Master Emerald. To this day, I still have no clue why any of this is relevant to Big. His only connection to the main events of the game is through Froggy's possession, but even then that doesn't concern him either. You'd think that Takao would have the foresight to show this to Sonic or Tails, not the big purple cat with an IQ and a negatives.
The Egg Carrier, continuing to lose altitude, Big and Froggy flee the free falling ship only to be ambushed by Eggman and the defeated Chaos Four that's doing something awfully sus to the air around it. His plans for world domination are almost coming into fruition. The Good Doctor commands Chaos to assault the Frog alongside the two Chaos Emeralds to finally reunify with his tail evolving to his final form Chaos Six. Now faced with the prospect of facing a literal god to save his friend, Sonic arrives in the nick of time to aid Big as he takes on his first and only boss of this run. Alright, so it's a tad disingenuous to call this encounter a boss fight per se, as it's more like a mini game of some sorts. Despite being in fuel with the might of six Chaos Emeralds, Chaos attack patterns are practically non-existent. What's he doing? Uh, he's just standing there. Menacingly! The aim of the game is to cast your line into the reticle that shifts position as Froggy swims inside Chaos. Once you hit the reticle, the fight comes to a sudden conclusion. As for any tips, it's practically luck based for the most part, although I found it way easier to catch Froggy once Chaos gradually grew closer. Obviously, this poses the risk of dying, but he moves so slow you have ample opportunities to hit the reticle before he makes contact with you. With Froggy now safe, Sonic orders the pair to leave alone in to fight Chaos 6 himself without the risk of collateral damage. With no other choice, Big hilariously decides to take Tails' Tornado 2 for a spin somehow managing to pilot the thing all the way back to the Mystic Ruins. Concluding this challenge with the knowledge that, no, it sadly isn't possible to beat Big Story without collecting a single ring. Whilst we did inevitably fail this challenge, I found this adventure in particular to be the most interesting at least for me. When I was writing this series, Big's campaign was the one I almost guaranteed was beatable ringless, and to see it come crashing down so swiftly due to such an arbitrary reason of how we entered the stage was just so remarkable on many levels. It's unfortunate as nothing within the stages himself posed any sort of real threat to the challenge. Challenge. If we entered the stages in any other way, this would have been possible. Alas, it just wasn't to be. With five stories down, join us in the next couple of weeks for the thrilling conclusion of this challenge, when we find out where it's possible to beat both Gamma and Supersonic Story without collecting a single ring. Now, if you enjoyed the video, please consider smashing the like button and subscribing. We're aiming for 100 subscribers by my birthday in April, and support of any kind is truly appreciated. Also, comment down below your thoughts and any ideas for future runs that you'd like to see me take on. For now, though, I've taken up enough of your time, so take care. Stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.